Hi guys, it's Carrie from Salesflare, and today I'm going to show you how to use our new custom reporting functionality available on Salesflare's Pro Plan. I'll show you how to create and manage dashboards, as well as how to create nice new reports on these dashboards. While Salesflare already comes with the reports most companies need built in, you can now also build your very own reports. We focus on making this as easy to use as possible so you can easily extract all the insights you need. But before I take you through everything, it's good to be very clear about definitions. To put it simply, in Salesflare, a report is a specific visual representation of a part of your data that provides you with concrete insights. It can be a chart, a table, or a scorecard. And a dashboard is the page where you place a group of your related reports. Now let me show you how you can work with them. So getting started is really simple. If you want to edit one of the existing dashboards, just click on the three dot menu button at the top right and then edit dashboard. You can then reorder the reports on your dashboard simply by dragging and dropping. Scorecards are always grouped at the top and other types of reports are placed below that. You can change the name of each dashboard at the top left too, and if you like what you see, just press save at the top right. Do you want to create a new dashboard? Then click on the dashboard selector in the top left and then hit create dashboard. You can give it a good recognizable name and press save. And then you'll have your first custom dashboard. It's still a bit empty, so let's start filling it in. To create the first report on your new dashboard, click the add report button at the top right. And here we go, this is Salesforce's new custom report builder. So first, you can configure your report. You can give your report a title that explains what it's all about. And if you need more words to describe it, then you can write up a description that explains your report even better. So you can remind your later self or explain it to your team members. And this will appear when anyone hovers over the little info icon on the report. Next is an important decision. What entity do you want to report on? You can currently report on accounts, contacts, opportunities, and tasks. Also important is when filtering by time in the dashboard, you have to think about what do you want to apply this to? For example, do you want to report on the opportunities that are closed or are expected to be closed in the selected period, those created in that period, or do you want to filter by one of the other possible date fields? This choice will depend on what your report is all about. In our example here, we'll report on newly created opportunities. So we'll select opportunities as the entity and creation date as the time filter. The next part of the report builder allows you to preview your report using the filters that you'll later have at the top right of your dashboard. That way, you can have an idea of how your report will look in different periods for different people and for different pipelines. It's not a setting that is fixed when you save the report. It only offers you a way to preview your report. Now we come to the interesting part where you actually build the report. At the top left, you can select different chart types. You have column chart, bar chart, line chart, scorecard, pie chart, or pivot table. Then you can define what you want to measure by, what you want to view this by, and optionally how you want the data to be segmented. In our example, we want to see who created which total opportunity value in the selected period and pipeline and segment this total value by the different stages they're in. So we'll select view by opportunity created by to see who created the opportunities. We'll select measure by opportunity value and take the sum of those values to see the total value of those opportunities. And we'll segment by opportunity stage to see the total value in each of the different stages they're in. And so now we have our first custom report. A quick note before we move on, data is always ordered in the same way. Time is always chronological, stages are always in their set order, and other things are ordered from largest to smallest results. Again, to visualize your results in a different way, you can switch the chart types at the top. You can switch from column, bar, line, scorecard, pie chart, and pivot table. Some chart types will be a better fit than others for what you're trying to visualize. We'll go for the bar chart in this example. 
If you want to see the bars representing the segments next to each other instead of stacked, simply unselect Stack Segments in the Advanced Options. The other two advanced options allow you to also include the data points for which the view by or segment by isn't specified. In this case, every opportunity is in a stage and is created by someone, so it isn't applicable. But if you, for instance, segment by account country, you can use this to include the opportunities for which the account country isn't specified. Note that next to segment by account country, it says top seven by default. This makes it so that only the top seven account countries with the highest total opportunity value are shown. The other segments are grouped in other. It protects your report from becoming more detailed and difficult to visualize than necessary. Taking this report as an example, when you visualize more than 10 segments, the smaller segments already become tiny, difficult to read, and a little too much to visualize. A similar protection on the amount of data points is used when reporting by time. The maximum you can visualize is 366 data points, aka the maximum number of days in a year. Last but not least, if you want to report on a subset of your data only, you can do this with the filters at the right. These filters work the exact same way as everywhere else in Salesforce, for example, when filtering different lists or selecting an audience for a workflow. We can, for instance, only report on opportunities that are linked to the accounts with which we were in contact in the past month. That way, we're not counting opportunities that went quiet. When you're happy with the report, you can click Create. And there you go. Our sales performance dashboard now contains its first report with the value of our new opportunities by month, segmented by the account country. To finish off, I'll show you the remaining things you can do to manage your dashboards and reports. To reorder the dashboards, open the menu at the top right again. Click Reorder Dashboards and drag them around and then save when you're ready. To delete a dashboard or edit it again, like we did before, that's also in the same menu. If you want to duplicate a report, click on the same little menu button at the top right of each report. If there's any report you don't want, just delete it. Note that the built-in reports are not deletable as they're natively built in and can't easily be recreated with the custom reporting functionality. In case you really don't want to see a built-in report anymore, it's best to move it to another dashboard. And finally, you can move a report to a different dashboard by clicking Move and then selecting the right dashboard. Again, to move around reports within a dashboard, just click Edit Dashboard and start dragging and dropping until you like what you see. Okay, that's all I have for you on custom dashboards and reports today. As always, if you have any more questions, you can always reach out to us on the chat and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching.